Welcome back to my WordPress dynamic data series. Hope you're learning a lot here so far. Let's keep going, just dive right into it. If you have any questions along the way, leave them in the comments down below. The next topic of custom post types is literally the game changer. It's obviously the biggest one. It's the main thing you need to understand before we start diving into everything else. And it really changes the game for you. If you've ever thought WordPress is limiting in any sort of way, this is probably the reason. If you don't know these, then th this is really gonna change your life. I'm not, even, I'm not even exaggerating. It did for me, it absolutely will for you. Let's talk about it. In order to talk about it, we have to go back for a second and recap what we had before. Our posts were specifically for blog posts. They're designed for blog posts way long ago. They're still the best way to do that. I would never recommend you, you create like a custom post type like we'll talk about. I never recommend that you create that for a blog. We can talk about different things there as we go use the post type for the blog. But then you wonder, again, like a normal person, hey, I wanna have portfolio, I wanna have projects, I wanna have real estate listings, what have you. I need some way to manage that because that's that, that makes sense, that logical line of thinking. I need some way to manage that. I don't know where to put that on this in this website or whatever. I don't wanna make a bunch of pages or whatever. There's gotta be a better way. You are absolutely right. So you go and you download those third-party post types and then at some point you're gonna get limited or it's just you're gonna to have to pay for extra like features or something like that and it's just gonna be kind of hard to manage after that. So if you grow out of that and you realize, okay, well, I want more features or I want more like, you know, customization between like, hey, maybe, maybe it only gives me like an image in there, it, I want a gallery or something, then now you're gonna be wondering, well, what's the next step? Well, I'm telling you the next step is custom post types. There's gonna come a time when you need, again, those features, or you're gonna need more specifically a different kind, like a more specific kind, like maybe like books or uh, you know services or something, and you're not gonna have a plugin that's gonna be able to do that. You're not gonna find one. You're like, oh, I really love this portfolio one, but I want it to be named services, or I wanna like download two portfolios and like manage two portfolios. That's not it, it's custom post types. So what actually are custom post types? It's a little hard to describe, but it's basically any time that you want a list of those entries, or really they're called posts, but I'm trying to give you examples of like, you know, analogies. If you have anything that's like, you're gonna have a bunch, like one type of content that you can somehow group together as like a one word or, you know, a, a phrase, and you can have a ton of them. I'm just gonna give you a ton of examples, because as soon as I give you a ton of examples, you're gonna understand. Again, books, services, team members, brochures, um, like like could be a ton of different things. I'm not gonna be able to explain every single use case. You're gonna have to like do some architecturing of it as you go and, and see what makes sense. But hopefully if I give you kind of the knowledge of how it works, then you'll be able to kind of pick and kind of create the way that you want to do these things based off of the way that the system is designed to work. The best way to explain all of this is to kind of just show you, walk you through, and understand the power of everything that we have here at our disposal with custom post types and building websites. The first thing that you need to understand is that in order to build a custom post type, you could do it via code, programmatically, what have you. We're not gonna do that here because that's, that's outside the scope of this. But we're gonna do it via a plugin, okay? That is how most people do it, and there are many different ways to do it that way. Now, I'm gonna pull up an article here five best custom post type plugins for WordPress by Lana here over at uh, Crocoblock. And if you look, if you scroll down in this article, I'll leave a link to this article in the description. You can see the five best custom post type plugins. Again, we're going to install a plugin this time, but we're going to install a plugin that gives us the opportunity to create these things for our own rather than being like whittled into just portfolio or just projects or just real estate listings or what have you. Now, I'm gonna tell you again, the way that I started, I'm not trying to influence your decisions on what you're using here, and you're probably gonna to wanna to start for free, which is understandable, so I'm gonna show you how to start for free. The way that I started, you can see right here as a list of these uh, custom post type uh, plugins. These are the plugins. You do not need all of these plugins, you only need one of these plugins. Again, as you continue to grow and evolve, you can decide which one is best for you, but I'm gonna give you the high level of my experience, and then you can run with it. When I started out, I started with this the, this setup right here. Number one, custom post type UI and advanced custom fields, okay? These are gonna link out to the repository. This plugin right here, you can see a lot of people, okay? A lot of people have used this bad boy, all right? One million, okay? And then advanced custom fields, oh, two million people have used this one, okay? So these are not like, you know, you know run by, you know, there's not like, uh, you know, fly by not operations. These are, these are big time plugins, a lot of people use them, okay? So those two have free versions, right? And I will tell you one more thing, okay? When I started, 
advanced custom fields did not have the full level of functionality that it does now. So actually, if you're gonna do this, and the way I'm gonna demo this is we're just gonna download advanced custom fields. We don't even need custom post type UI anymore because advanced custom fields does everything we need. I will talk about that at length as we continue to go. But my point is, if you go to this and you wanna look in these, uh, into these other tools right now, you can, but there's other ones. There's tool set, there's Jet Engine, there's Metabox, there's Pods. I actually currently use Jet Engine. It is a paid tool though. There is not a free version of that. So for your sake, I will not demo with that so you can follow along in every, with every, everything in advanced custom fields. But just understand, I am using these tools just to demo. You could use any of them. The concepts are obnoxiously important. That is the reason I'm making these videos. So please, please, please focus on the concepts, not necessarily the tools. Okay, so let's keep going here. Let's get rid of all this stuff. Let's come back into our WordPress install and I've already typed in ACF. If you're gonna follow along, go to plugins, go to add new plugin, type in ACF. This is one you want, advanced custom fields, 2 million installs, install and activate. Once we have that activated, you can see now in the left-hand column, we actually do have a new, a new little option there and it's called ACF. Now there's gonna be a lot going on here because that one plugin really opened up again, a ton of things for you and I'm gonna to try to go through it as easily and as uh, you know efficiency like building block wise as possible. If you hover over ACF, there's a bunch of different options. What we're gonna click on first is post types because I think that's gonna make the most sense. So when we open this up here, this is the place where we're actually going to create our custom post type, okay? This is where it all happens. And I will give you an example. Um, well, I'll give you several examples. Again, what you're gonna type in here could be projects, could be team members, could be books, could be properties, could be whatever. It is a, think of it as a collection of data that is all the same type of thing, all the same like object, if you will, but you're gonna have so many of them or multiple of them, it doesn't really matter the number, but you're gonna have a lot of them and you don't wanna manage them manually and independently on just like a web page. You don't wanna be like writing all these different things all this different time, right? So let's talk about what we do. Let's click add post type. Now you can kind of see in here already, they give you an example just as like a little, even a placeholder. Why don't we just use movies as an example? Okay, so we'll type in movies and that's our plural label. You have to give it a label. You have to call it something, so it's movies. You have to give it a singular label. We'll call it movie. It's very simple. It's, at, it's telling you exactly what to do. Your post type key. This is your slug for the post types. We'll talk about it. Remember back when we were talking about posts in the last video, we said it's gonna be slash and then the name of our post. That's for the default posts post type, okay? For these other ones, there's gonna be a slash and it's gonna be movie, movies, whatever, and then slash the name of the movie or the slug of that particular post. In my mind, this is a, uh, you know, there's different schools of thought on this. The way that I like to do this, the way that I'm gonna teach you to do this, go against me if you like, that's totally fine, is I like to put this as plural. I think it's better overall, but we'll talk about it. And again, mark this down as a decision that you can make for yourself. But if you're following along right now and learning this for the first time, make it plural. Next thing is it's asking for taxonomies. We're gonna skip over that because we did not get to taxonomies yet. It's saying public, which means just it's visible on the admin dashboard. If you don't know where we're at right now, just leave it like that. Hierarchical, again, just leave it like that. And then advanced, advanced configuration, it literally says, I know what I'm doing, show me all the options. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of different things. I do, I guess we'll touch on this real quick. Title, editor, and featured image. Remember when we talked about posts, there was a title, there was an editor, which is the post content that I was talking about, and there was a featured image. There's also these other ones. Notice they are not checked because they're not really like commonly needed in what we're doing now, this beautiful way of setting up actual custom post types with all these different stuff. You really don't need them. You may not even need the editor if you don't want. I tend to turn it off, but we'll leave it on for now. So there's a couple different things here that you could kind of do there very dependent upon skill level and your needs, okay? There's other options here. There's labels, right? This is literally just aesthetic. It's just how it's gonna show up on the side here. There's visibility, there's URLs, there's permissions. We do not need to go into all this. That is overkill for this moment in time. We're gonna click save changes and now look what we did over here. 
we have movies and we have a little pin. We can change the little pin icon right here because it automatically just inherits the, you know, this, the default one from posts, but that might get a little confusing, especially if you have more than these, right? Let's say you have movies, you have team members, you have other things, might get a little confusing. So we're still on post type. And if we scroll down, we can see visibility settings. And then we have a menu icon. That's what that is, this little, this little pin right here. So we can do this dash icon class name. It just brings up like all these different things. Very easy to change this icon. You can make it really custom if you want, but there's really no need for that. We can just go right here. We can take this little video, right? And then we come up here to the top. We copy this dash icons, form, dash icons, dash format, dash uh, video. And we come back over to here. We paste that into our menu icon. We click save changes. Bada bang, bada boom. Now we have something that actually makes sense, right? We have a little movie thing and we have movies. Awesome, perfect. Congratulations, you've already, you've just created a custom post type. So why don't we see what we have created? So remember when we went over to posts, it's very similar, you can see all posts. Let's click into movies, you can see all movies. So now we have movies and we can add a new movie. Wow, this is really interesting. Okay, so we have a title and we have an editor block and we have featured image, we have even less things on the right hand side now because we didn't leave things on mark why how is this any better how is this any better well i'm going to tell you why it's better it's better for two reasons one if you wanted to have movies on your website but you already had blog posts well what are you going to do you're not going to put them in the blog post you're not going to do them manually they're not you're not just going to like write all the movies down on the front page what if you need to change one what if you want to reorder one are you going to move them around you don't want to do that so what you wanna do is you wanna create like, again, a little instance, a little post of each one, but you have to make it custom because you can't put it in that blog section. So that's what we've done right now. We have created a way to import movies or team members or services into this website in a very, very organized way. But again, the question becomes number two is, okay, well, okay, I got you, Mark. Okay, okay, so so hang on a second. Okay, so what's your favorite movie? Uh, Inception, okay, so now we have Inception, okay. Um, all right, so I so I added a movie, right? I, I press publish, I press publish twice, and now we have a movie, right? If we go back to uh, movies here, we gotta refresh this side. If we go back to movies, oh, okay, so we have Inception. Okay, Mark, I'm still not exactly sure how that helped me because I want to create something where I can see the name of the movie, the movie poster, uh, you know, the director, maybe some of the actors, the how long it is, the runtime. I wanna see all that stuff. I mean, I, I was gonna write all that down on the page, you know, just like in a text editor or something like that. Um, so what if I, like, I want all that. Like, what am, like, what do I do now? I am super happy you asked because that is the next thing that we need to talk about right here, which is custom fields. So we talked about custom post type here. We gotta talk about custom fields now because this is the next thing that is really gonna rock your world. Now that you have an actual place to put those movies in this case, now we need to actually create some fields. So here's the question that you need to ask yourself. You need to ask yourself, what do I want to know about these movies? So a title is pretty standard. You're gonna have a title of a movie or you're gonna have like the name of a team member or you're gonna have the name of a service. That's all gonna go in that title, that title piece, right? But the next parts are well, what else do we wanna put in here? I mean, we could write some stuff in this in this editor piece, but we wanna be a little bit more organized than that. And more so than organized, we wanna have direct access to all of these different bits of information, okay? If you go on to, again, our movie example, and you go on to IMDB, right? There is gonna be a ton of information there for you. Let's actually examine this, okay? Let's just take a look at this page here and see what we see. We see the name of the movie, or we'll call it the title. We see the year that it came out. We see the rating. We see the runtime. We see a picture of it, you know, just the, the main poster. We see a rating. We see popularity. There's videos. There's photos. There's a director. There's a writer. There's stars. There's categories. How are we going to do all this? How would I manage all this if I didn't have like a way to to lump all of these movies together and organize the data. Well, I'd have to do it very, very manually. It would be a, a nightmare and you really just don't wanna do that. So again, this is, we are creating a system to literally do exactly just this. And that is custom post types. And our next thing is custom fields, like I said. So we have some of those things, right? We have some of the basic stuff just by the title and all that. And we could use featured image just for this featured thing. 
but we don't have a field. We don't have anywhere we can put the the year. We don't have anywhere we can put the rating, right? We don't have any categories and things like that. We don't have a director thing. So why don't we add some? Why don't we add some? Okay. So if we go back over to ACF, and this time instead of clicking on post types because we already have one, let's click on field groups. Field groups, by the way, is just the way that ACF handles it. Uh, there's a reason that they call it that. Uh, I will get to it later, but it doesn't really matter for right now. Field groups, and we're going to click on add new field group. We have to title our field group. For the sake of this example, we are going to call it movie. We'll call it movies field group. You can call it whatever you want, as long as you understand that this is, these are the fields that you want to use for movies. You could use them actually for other post types too. We're not going to do that right now. This is the movies field group. This is where you have to stop and think, what is the information that I want to build around this movie? The information, the bits of information, the, the, literally the fields of information that I want for every single movie, what are those? We already have a title. We don't need that. What else do we need? Well, I would say that one of the things I would want is a year. I would want the year that the movie came out. I think most movies are going to have that, right? That seems like something that I would love to know and love to share with my, my visitors on my website. So what do we do, Mark? This looks a little confusing. Okay, I'm going to tell you. So the first thing you need to do is we've made the decision that we want to do a year, right? So we, the first thing we need to do is decide what type of field that is. Well, I have no idea what the types are. Why don't we look at this list, right? So there's a ton of them, okay? ACF, this is the free version. There's even more at the pro version, but there's a ton of them. We're going to have our work cut out for us here. We don't need. We don't even need to go into all, all the depths of all these things. There's a ton, okay? Luckily... Luckily, a year is literally just a number, okay? We could use a number, and we could do a couple different things. We may also, if we were getting fancy, we might want to use a date picker, right? Now, you could, you could literally go to the date, right? That is a possibility. So let's click date. I actually like date because it really is a date. It might not have, we may not put a, like a month and a day in there, but ultimately that year is part of a date and it did come out on a specific day. So you could put that in there. Um, so I'm going to use date picker for this. You could use number if you really wanted to, but let's use date. So what is our field label? Like, what is this going to say when we're picking this? Well, we're probably going to say release year is probably the, is probably the most reasonable thing that I could think of. Right? So that's our release year. That's our, that, that's our label. What our label is, is that's the name that's going to appear there, and that's the thing that you're going to read, okay? The field name, in this case, the way that they say this, is it's a single word with no spaces because that is an actual variable in the database that they are going to, that you're going to know about. You can Those things can be different, obviously. They don't have to be the same, but you have to understand that like, this is the readable one, and this is like kind of the technical one. So the next thing, because we chose date picker, some of the things that, that change down here, some of the things like the options that we have. So we have display term, format and return format. We do not need to get super in-depth into this concept right now, but these are the ways that you're going to see the thing that you put in there and the ways that the the the, the program, the page builder, the, the, the database, the WordPress install is going to return it, okay? So... For, to make this as simple as possible, let's just click May 3, 2024. That is just an example. Not every single one is going to say that. This is just an example of how it's going to look. Let's just click that one. We could do a bunch of different things, but let's click that one for now, and it'll be fine. Okay? So then week starts on Sunday, Monday. doesn't really matter. You can pick whatever you want there. And then we close that field. Okay? Now, what we did there was we created one custom field. Now, I know it's like, Mark, that was a lot of work. What are we going to trust me? You're going to love your life after this, okay? We created one custom field for our movies field group. Now, the next thing we need to do, and I like to do this pretty much right away because we can always add more fields as we go. You need to understand what you did there. You created a field group that we're going to add more to, but that field group needs to be assigned to one or multiple custom post types like we added before. So if you come down here, you have location rules, and you can say show this field group if it's equal to something. Well, in our case, we want post type. When the post type is movie, we want to show this field group. We want to associate this field group with movies, right? It's not enough just to write it up here. You have to say what you want it, what it, what you want it to be associated with, okay? So, and I'm going to show you in real time what happens. Remember? Remember we were over here? And we have this, right? 
we have our inception and I can't scroll, I can't see anything, I can't do anything, okay? As soon as I click save changes, that is gonna change. We reload and now look at this. Get rid of this auto save thing. We have inception, we have our, our, we have our title, we have our uh, editor post content. Down at the bottom, look what we have. Movies field group and we have our release here. And we could pick a day. And we could pick, you know, we could pick any day and obviously we would just need the year. But the point is we could pick any of that, okay? What does that mean? What the hell did we just do there? Well, what we did was we created a post type, we created a custom field group, we created a custom field within that group, and we associated that field group with our custom post type. So now what we could do is we could create 100 movies, okay? We could create 100 movies, we could give them a title, and we could give it a release year. And then we can utilize that in ways that I will explain to you, okay? But that is the start, okay? Why don't we keep going? Why don't we add a couple more fields just to make this a little bit more, a little more interesting? So we click add field here. What is another field that we may want? Hmm, well, let's see. What makes the most sense? I think rating might make the most sense next. We don't wanna to add too many because there's some more fun things that we can do. Let's add rating. Let's think about rating though. You might say, Mark, hey, we could just put text in there and every single time we could type R or we could type PG-13 or we could type, you know, like PG or something. But here's the thing. You don't want to do that. Why don't you want to do that? How many ratings are there? Maybe 10 max. Like if you count like all the ratings, what are the main ones? G, PG, PG-13, R. Okay, that's enough. Four is enough. What do we want to do? Let's take a look at our field type. Text, we don't want to type it in. Text area, that's just more text. We don't want to do that. Number, those aren't numbers. Range, it doesn't really make any sense. It's like it would be a range of things. That's not it. It's not an email. It's not a URL. It's not a password. It's not an image. It's not a WYSIWYG editor. Mm, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Select, checkbox. Well, checkbox would be multiple. So that's not going to work. Radio button would work, and select button would work. This is really kind of a personal preference. It's do you want to see them all? Or do you just want to see a drop down? For our purposes, I'll go radio button, okay? And our field label would be rating because it's a rating. And then our field name would be rating because that's our variable. And then our choices. All you have to do here to create this little beautiful little radio button is just G and then a new line, enter, PG, PG13, and R. Cool. We could talk about a default value if you want. But that would just be like, you can set one of these to be a default value um, and return value and everything like that. You don't really need to worry about any of that right now. We are, again, just in just in our, uh, in our early phases here. We're going to press Save Changes. It's going to roll everything up. Important to note here, we're still editing the same field group. You don't need to come down here and do that whole thing again. It already knows. We just added rating to that. Well, what's going to happen over here? We're going to reload it. It's going to tell me about this auto save thing again. Oh, look at that. What do we have on the bottom now? We have release year, and we have ratings for this movie. That's amazing. Well, this is getting kind of interesting now. So we can come in here, and we can go all the way back to 2010, and we can just pick a random day in 2010. We can come in here to PG. We can click update. What have we done there? Well, what we've done there is we have our post, our movie, right? You're going to commonly hear that referred to as post, though. Even though it's a custom post type, and even though there's that default posts post type, for blogs, each one of these is, you know, kind of colloquially called a post. It should be called a movie as well. But our movie here, our individual movie, now has a title. It has a release year, release date, and then it also has a rating. So that's really interesting. Now you're starting to see, hmm, wait a minute. If I have Inception, then what if I went back and added another movie, just like I would add a, another blog post, and what if I went, mm, what's another good movie? Toy Story. And we figured out the release year. Was it 96? I don't know. Doesn't matter. And we picked a random day in 96. And rating is probably PG or something, right? Doesn't matter. Point is, if you make a mistake, you could just change it right here without having to do any crazy stuff like on you know, a page or something. So now, wait, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mark. This is, this is kind of like you're, you're starting to create a little, almost like a collection of, of movies that all have 
information in them based on different types of data, different types of fields that you that you that that, that they all have in common because they're all movies, right? So if the, if the if the information is all common, then we can create these custom post types for one type of content movie. In this case, we can create the custom fields that are all pretty common throughout each one of these. Most of them would have, you know, mostly, like most of them would have a rating, most of them would have a year. And then we can set all of those pieces of data in each one of the movies in individually. And now we have access to all of those things because they're kind of, they're stored in the database. So if we come back over here, now we kind of know about custom fields too, right? And we've scratched the surface, but we kind of understand the idea. There's a ton of different field types you can pick from. Those field types create a, an actual field with a, with a label and name, possibly choices depending on what type of field it is. And then that field is in each one of those posts and we can set it as such. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's go back over to IMDb for a second. We have a rating. We have a year. We have a title. What about these though? What are these? Well, these are a little different <clears throat> and you could handle these many different ways, but these are a little different, right? So action, adventure, sci-fi. In movie terms, what do we call those? We call them genres, movie genres, right? In WordPress land, there is a concept that we're going to utilize here. So if we go back over here, I'm going to skip relationship for a second, but I'm going to come back to it right after we talk about taxonomies. In WordPress land, genres, categories, those types of things are all under this taxonomy concept, this taxonomy umbrella. Okay. And taxonomy is a way to categorize things is really what it is. But again, the language is, is weak. Okay. So just understand that the word taxonomy means like if you want to categorize like things that that's a way to do it. And I'll explain what categories and tags are based off of the, uh, the default first. So when we're talking about taxonomies, we're talking about ways to categorize things more or less. If we go back to our posts, we can see there's already by default, we didn't put this in here. This was in here earlier, categories and tags. Well, what exactly is that at the default level? You know, we didn't talk about this then because we were talking about specific posts, but now it's going to make sense. It's going to matter. It's going to matter moving forward because we have more things that we need to, we need to categorize and organize and all that. Okay. So what's the difference between categories and tags at the default level level? Well, very simply, the way that it's designed to work with default WordPress is categories are hierarchical. If I'm saying that right. Okay. You can have many different categories. You can have like sub categories for things. And it's like, you are a part of this category. You could be a part of multiple categories, but really you're a part of, you're part of categories that are descriptive of your, of your category in your organization. And you can have multiple, but there is some sort of structure to it. For instance, let's say that we were talking about a clothing website and it was like men's shoes. Well, that might be two categories that might be men's. And then that might also be a subcategory of that, which is shoes. So those are like men's shoes. It's kind of in both of those categories. The difference between categories and tags is that tags are not hierarchical in that sense. They are just a ton of different like tags or keywords that you can, you can, uh, attach to a post. So think of it like, I, I honestly, this is, it gets a little hairy and, it, and you can really do these many different ways, but just think of it more so like this. If you're putting, you're putting a post into a category, which is like a hierarchical organization list, but you're putting a tag on a post. If you're just trying to give it some sort of extra descriptor or extra, uh, you know, some sort of, um, some sort of something in that regard. There's a lot of use cases for both truly, but from the core way of using, again, going back to the blog piece, categories would be like, if you're talking finance or if you're talking entrepreneurship, those would be more like categories. Tags would be like kind of sub subset topics that you're kind of talking about within there perhaps, or different keywords that you're hitting on. It's really like just a, it's an art form. It doesn't really matter as long as you kind of fully understand like that 
the at the main the main difference is categories can be hierarchical and tags are just there is no there is no organization to it. There's you're just adding tags to things. That's really all there is. Most of the time, truthfully, from my end, I'm using categories because I like the option of being able to have subcategories if I need to. Tags are more just again, just kind of all across the board, and you can just throw different tags on all sorts of stuff. There's no structure there. That's pretty much the where it ends as far as like the differences there on the taxonomies. The reason I'm bringing it up though is because I want us to create a genre, right? And you're wondering now, it's like, okay, well, you have categories and tags on the posts, but how do we create a taxonomy for, for movies now? Because that's, that's totally different. Well, we go back to our, our plugin here, our free plugin, ACF, and we come down to taxonomies this time. We do a similar thing. We click add taxonomies and look at that because we use the, the, uh, the example that's in there, it's already telling us what to do for the next one with the with the placeholders. So our plural is genres, and our singular is genre, and our taxonomy key, which is the same thing as before. That is our that is our slug. That is our our variable for the slug uh, in the URL bar is going to be genre, and then our post types. This is important because we can create a post type. And we can add it to many different many or we can create a taxonomy excuse me and we can add it to many different post types in this case we're only going to want to add it to movie there's some other cases maybe you want to add to more but it doesn't matter for right now so our genres are going to be for our movies okay and then again the rest of this stuff here is you know kind of important but this is the one specific piece is hierarchical or not if you do not switch this it's going to behave like tags per se if you do switch it, it's going to behave like categories. And in this case, I think I kind of want it to behave like categories. You don't need subcategories, but it's nice to be able to have that if necessary. So I normally like to switch it. And then we're going to click on Save Changes. And what's that going to do for us here? Now, if we hover over movies, we have all movies, we have ad movies, and we have genres. Okay. Similar to how we have categories. It's the same type of UI. It's the same type of interface for adding categories as it is for genres because really they're the same thing. It's just a new taxonomy. It's a separate taxonomy. Okay, awesome. So we have a genre, like this is our list of genres. Well, what do we need? Well, in if we're just using this example, we're going to need at least action, adventure, and sci-fi. So why don't we add those real quick? So we're going to add action and our slug is just going to be the same. You honestly don't even need to click that. You just click add genre. It's automatically going to import. It's just automatically going to pull in the specific slug there. You can give a description for these genres if you want, but if you're never going to use them, then you don't need to. It would only be if you wanted to have like a page of all the action movies and you wanted to say what action meant, like what that genre represented. That would be a great place to put that. We are not there yet though, so we're not going to do that. Uh, if we go to adventure, if I could spell uh, adventure and we click add new, we have adventure. And then if we do sci-fi, I can't type. I'm sorry. There we go. Sci-fi. Boom. So we have three genres. Awesome. We could even add like another one if we want. We could just do like comedy just as an example, just to show you that we can add more. You could add a ton if you want. There you go. Those are your genres. Add a whole list if you want. There you go. So the next thing we have to do is now we have our post types. We have our custom fields. We have our taxonomies attached to our, to our, to our post type movies, but we need to go back to movies now because we built these taxonomies and we didn't we didn't assign any of the tax and we, we built the taxonomy of genre, but we didn't assign any genres to any of the movies. Well, let's go into inception and let's go ahead and go over to our new option over here, genres, and we can click action, adventure, and sci-fi. And then we click update. So now what we've done is we still have all that information that we had there before, but this movie inception is now categorized into those genres. So we could, if we had a ton more movies, that were action or adventure or sci-fi, we would be in the back end creating a list, an, like almost a another way of categorizing and displaying ultimately one day data that is all similar in nature. We're literally creating like, again, a database, it's literally why it's called that, like of, of information. So just keep that in mind, okay. So that was taxonomies. I think we kind of covered that. If you have any questions, let me know. We talked about categories and tags as the defaults, and then we created a custom taxonomy, specifically named genres. But again, as more examples, as you could say, is you could have services. What if, let's take a stop, let's take a, sec, let's take a second. 
let's say we didn't do movies because you're probably not making a website with movies necessarily. Let's say we did one with services. So let's say we did services and let's say you're a landscaping company and let's say that you have like t you know, 10 different services that you render and you could think of those services in two different ways. You can think of some of them as commercial services and some of them as residential services. Well, then commercial and residential could be a part of your new taxonomy that you created. Those could be two options, or you could have a bunch of different things. It doesn't really matter. Again, there are many different ways to do this. If your example or the thing you're building lends itself to some other, you know, like example of like movies or something that's similar, then just copy that same framework and do it. But again, these are there's so many different ways to manipulate this data and 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 craft the architecture that it's just another tool in your arsenal there, taxonomies. Awesome. Now let's get into something kind of interesting though. Let's get into another one. Let's go back to IMDB because I want to talk about relationships. Now, sometimes they're called relations, sometimes they're called relationships, depends on what which which one you're using. And it's gonna and this is one that's gonna kind of change depending on what what uh ACF, the type plugin you're using. So like uh, if you're using ACF or Jet Engine or uh, you know ACPT, like it's gonna it's gonna change the way that you have to do this. But the concept again is still the same. Let me explain the concept. What do we see on this page? We see titles. We see all the sorts of information. We see like PG thirteen. We see uh, twenty ten. We see the runtime, right? Well, the runtime is probably going to be another another custom field, right? Right? Cuz it's just a runtime. You know, it's it's not like it's not like the runtime itself has anything to do with anything. It's not like the runtime has any more information behind it. You know, 2010, I mean, there could be other movies that were put out in 2010, which that's fine. We didn't want to make that as a, as a as anything else. So we we did that the right way. Um, there's a couple things on here though that are kind of interesting to me because here's an example. A movie is something, it's a type of, it's an object, it's a type of content that has a ton of other things that you get at, right? We've, we've literally just started doing this, right? We, we have a ton of uh, fields in there. But is there anything else on this page that you think we could create another custom post type for? Something that might have more information regarding it or to do with it or other custom fields that would lend itself to that type of content type. Because I see a couple, I see at least one that we're gonna use, okay? If we look at the bottom, we see director, we see writer, we see stars. Those, what are those? What are those things? Those are people, right? So people or whatever we wanna call them, and we call them people, we could call them we could call them directors, we call them writers, we call them stars. It doesn't, it, it, this is again, there's a little bit of minutia here, but I'm gonna tell you an example. What is Christopher Nolan, Leonardo DiCaprio, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Elliot Page all have in common? They are all people, okay? In some ways they're stars, but we're just gonna call them people. So if we have people, if we, it almost looks like to me that we have movies, right? We have a movie. And then we have people that are related to that movie. That's what it looks like to me. And the reason I say that is because a person, right? Like if we click on Christopher Nolan here, what, is, what does Christopher Nolan have? What does he have? Well, he has a name. He's got like titles or occupations. He's got pictures. He's got a bio. He's got contact info. He's got photos. He's got all sorts of stuff. What I'm saying to you is in this in this case, and in possibly in the case that you're working on, this calls, if you're doing it right, calls for a relationship. A relationship is when you have one custom post type and you need to relate that custom post type to another custom post type. So you have those two, so you have to create a relationship between those two so you can utilize them you create the relationship so you can relate to individual or multiple custom post types. Why don't we just why don't we just take a look at how we do that? How does that sound? So let's slide back over here. Okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to custom post types this time. We already have movies. We're gonna add a new one. We're gonna call it people. Call it something else if you want. Doesn't matter. We're gonna call it people, and we'll call it person, and we'll say person. Actually. 
we'll say people because I like to go plural here. Okay, so people, person, people, whatever. Okay, again, they're just names. They don't matter. Taxonomies. We don't need any taxonomies right now. We don't need any taxonomies on the people. That is not necessary because we we did a genre. We don't need any taxonomies on the people. We can do public is fine. Hierarchical, just leave it. It's fine. And then down here, advanced configuration. If we come down just for the sake of it, we can come back into this dash lane thing, this dash icon thing. And we can say just like person or user or people, business person, that's fine. Just to show you how to do another one of these. So it all makes sense. And we're not like kind of confused there visually on the left. So we have dash lane business person. We'll say save changes. Now look what we have here. We have movies and we have people now. Interesting. Okay. So we have two custom post types. All right. So if we come back down to field groups, well, we have movies field group, but we can't use that because that's specific to movies. Like people don't have ratings. People don't have, uh, you know, like release dates necessarily. So let's go in here. Let's come in here. Let's say people field group. And what are we going to, what are we going to do here? What, what are some, what are some, if we go back over to Christopher Nolan, what are some things that he has? Well, he has a bio. Um, he might have some contact info. He might have some pictures, right? Might have a birthday. We could do a birthday. So again, it's kind of similar to our other one, but we he might have a birthday, right? So we can come down to uh, date picker. We could say field label and we could say birth date. And we'll just do the other thing here again. We'll do the May 3rd situation. I don't I like Sunday personally for that. And we will press save changes. But what did I forget to do? I create a new field group, people field group, and I create a new custom field. This was our first time on this page though, and we forgot to do something. We forgot to come down here to settings, and we forgot to come down to change this to person. So now when post type equals person, this field group is attached to post type, that post type specifically, the people post type. So if we come into people and we click add a new person, well, look at that. Now we have birth date down here which I don't necessarily care to change or look up Christopher Nolan's birthday, but we can add a new person, Christopher Nolan specifically, and we publish. Now I'll give you a quick little, quick little aside as we're working through this. Hopefully you're following along. If you are, please click a like button. Really appreciate that. I'll give you a quick aside here though, because the next thing that you might want to add if you're doing a people in this case would be bio. Now, there's different schools of thoughts on this, and there's different ways to handle this. Personally, I don't like to use the editor piece, this this here, if I can avoid it, just because it starts to create like this weird, literally just the weird look and UI and everything like that. And then like you can use blocks up here, but you can just use certain things down here in these fields. So honestly, a lot of times I like to turn off this editor and I like to utilize the fields themselves. So what do I mean by that? I'm just gonna show you. So let's say that we want to add a bio, like a biography field to this, to Christopher Nolan, to all of our people, to our people field group. Okay, well the best way to do that would be kind of one of two ways. Text is just one line of text, that's not enough for a bio. Text area could work, um, and I would consider that if you don't want people to format any of the text or anything like that. Text area is literally just gonna show uh, you know, a few lines of text sim similar to this, right? And it's not going to have any formatting whatsoever. What I tend to do is I go WYSIWYG. And the reason I do WYSIWYG is because that gives us, that gives people the option to actually format things if they really want to. Again, you can always strip that formatting out on the front end. doesn't really matter outside the scope of what we're doing right now. But let's just say WYSIWYG for now, okay? And let's say bio, and it's bio, and that's perfect. So now we have save changes. So now we come over and I'll show you this real quick. We have Christopher Nolan and we have our whole WYSIWYG editor here to, to change our bio and we have his birthday. And but we still have this block editor up here that if we're not actually gonna use that, we should probably get rid of it because it would be, it's gonna change this UI up. It's gonna make it a little bit cleaner for what we're doing specifically. So let's go ahead and do that because I wanna show you how. If we go over back to post types and we come down to people in this case, and we come down. This is where we talked about earlier. We had title, editor, and featured image. Very good for blog posts. Do not ever turn the editor off if you're doing the, the blog post, the main piece there. But for this, I want to turn it off just because I'm not going to need it and I don't want it to show up here. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna press reload, and now look at this. Looks way different. Looks a little maybe a little older-ish. Doesn't look as you know cool with the with the editor and stuff like that. But this is way easier to manage for you and or a client. Okay. So there's there's not anything you can screw up here. Okay. Like there's the permalink, which again we could we could have a separate discussion about that. But it's way easier for you to edit that if you need to. You can see the title. You can click the you can you know change the date in the birth date, and you have bio. You could also do a featured image, right? You can map that kind of however you want, utilize however you want. But this is this is this is awesome, right? So again, let's take a step back and talk about where we're at. We have movies. We have a couple movies in there. We have people, and we have Christopher Nolan written as a as a person, right? Here in the people category. Okay. Well, the next thing though is Okay, well, we created another custom post type. We have a post type in there. We have the fields and everything like that. We have enough to look at it. But the reason we were doing this was because we wanted to relate them, right? Well, we need to create the relationship between movies and people. And again, this is different in every single one. It's different in Jet Engine than it is in ACF, but I'll show you how to do it in ACF. So how we're going to do this is we're going to go back to ACF, and we're going to go to field groups, and we're going to click on movies field group. There's a couple different ways to do this in ACF. There's a couple different settings you can and can't change depending on what you want to do. But I'm going to give you just as much as I can on this. You're going to movies. The idea would be that when you are entering a new movie, right? You're entering Inception, you're entering the next movie you have. You're going to be going through that movie. You're going to put in a title, you're going to put in a release, you're going to put in a rating. And then you're going to you're going to have another thing where it's like, well, this is the movie that I have. I want to I want to relate the people that are in this movie. So I'm gonna add a field in the movies field group, and I'm gonna come down to relationship, right? And there's post object, there's relationship. They, they both do kind of like similar-ish things, but for the field label here, we're gonna say people, we're, why don't we say, why don't we say, why don't we say, for the first one, here, I'll show you a couple different things. The first one will say director, okay? So the first one will say director, right? And then filter by post type. What that means is that we don't want to show all the posts and pages and things like that when we're like picking from a list, basically. We want to show we want to show just person, just the person. And then we come down here, we can search post type taxonomy. Those are those are specific filterable options that I will show you here in a second when we go to actually do this. So what have we done? We added a director now. So in each movie, each movie is going to have a director, and that director is actually going to be pulled. It's going to be related from the people, like the people custom post type. So that's a relation right there. You understand? Like a movie in in that field, it is that is a movie field that is related to a person, a specific person. Okay? We'll do one more. We'll do another relationship. And we will do stars. And we'll come back down here and we'll do the same thing. We'll do post type person. And same things there. We can get more granular with the settings, but I want to make sure you understand the concepts. So director and stars. Perfect. Okay. Well, let's see what that did for us. Let's go back over to movies. Let's get rid of this. Come back in here. Inception. Awesome. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. What's happening here? All right. So we have release year. We have rating. Understandable. We have director, we have stars. Interesting. Okay. So the way that the UI works here on ACF is like all of your options here on the left and then everything on the right is what you have selected. Okay. Well, who's the director? The director is Christopher Nolan. So, okay, I'll click Christopher Nolan. Now he's grayed out over here and he's over here. So that means that Christopher Nolan is set as the director of this film. Okay, that's perfect. The stars, well, Christopher Nolan really isn't a star per se of the film, right? So why don't we go, just for the sake of it, we go back over to people and we say... We say Leo DiCaprio, and I don't know his birth date. I don't know his bio. It doesn't really matter. And let's do another person. And let's say, I'm just going to copy this real quick. Let's say Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Perfect. Publish. Now, we can go back over here. Make sure this is updated. We refresh Inception. Now, look what happened here. So now we have more people. You see what happened there, though? You see how we added people, and now we have people that auto-populate in here, so we don't need to, like, manage. Think of this. 
This is really important, okay? It's a little advanced, and you, won't, you wouldn't think of it until you ran into it, but I'm going to tell you why. If you... The, let's think about the other option. The other option could have been what if we what if we what if we wanted directors, right? What if we wanted to know the director of this film and we decided to just instead of making the director a relationship field, we made it a text field or we made it a like a just a radio field or a select field. Well, if we made it a text field, that's fine, but every single time somebody tried to add a movie and add the director of that movie, they would literally have to type in Christopher Nolan or whatever, and then there would be no real good way to know all of the films that Christopher Nolan has directed on our website here because that's not how it would work. It would just be like plain text in there. It wouldn't be related to anything. It would still be possible, but it wouldn't be ideal by the, in the slightest. So then your other option would be like, okay, well, Mark, what if I just like made them all the same? Like, what if I just made, you know, like a list like this or whatever with a bunch of choices and Christopher Nolan was on there, then it would be on every, it would be an option on every one. Well, the problem there, though, is a couple things. One, obviously, as we said, Christopher Nolan has more things about him, right? Like you might want to click into Christopher Nolan and see all that. But the other bigger thing is when you have to add a director, if you're going to do it like this where you have like those people as well, not only would you have to add it as a person, you would have to add a new director as a as a person in as a custom person like a custom post in the person thing, you would also have to then go back into the field group for movies and you would have to add another option and manually manage the, the checklist or the, you know, the, uh, the radio button. Not ideal. This is the way to go. So we have our director and we have our stars. We have Joseph Gordon-Levin and Leonardo DiCaprio. And we have update. So now what we have is we have a movie and we have the ratings in the, in the, the year. And then we also have this movie related to Christopher Nolan and this movie related to Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. What you have to understand is what this has created <clears throat> is a network, more or less, a relationship, you know, directional relationships between movies and people. So now, like you can, you will be able to, when we get to it, you will be able to ask for, can I see all the movies that Christopher Nolan is associated with? Can I see all of the stars that are in Inception? Can I see all of the movies that Leonardo DiCaprio has starred in? This is the way to go. I'm telling you, this is uh, next level when you understand this, you practice it, and you really implement it. Now, I know that we talked about a lot there in the relations. That's probably something kind of a little, you know, a little out there, a little harder to kind of comprehend here at first, but I need to tell you one more thing about this because Personally, I kind of like and understand the way that Jet Engine handles relations a little bit more than I like than how ACF handles relationships. Both good, just different. If you're using ACF because I, you know, it's free, it's available here. Um, I want to show you one more thing about relationships before we move on, and that is the fact that there is a concept of a bi-directional relationship, and in most cases. I do think that that's probably going to be what you may want. And the reason is because ultimately what that affords you is the ability to manage things even more efficiently. What I mean is you can have relations set, you can set the relations and manage the relations at movies or at people in this sense. So you can go to Joseph Gordon-Levitt and you can add movies that he's a part of there. Or you can go to Inception and add stars that are a part of that movie there. You can manage them in both places. And then what that gives you the ability to do is you don't have to manage, you, you can manage them in either or instead of both. Because if you manage them at one and they're bi-directionally related to the other, that means that if you go to Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and it doesn't make sense too much for the movies thing, but it would make sense in other examples. Let's say that Joseph Gordon-Levitt is no longer in Inception, but he is showing up as being related. You can take him out of the Inception. You can go to Inception. You can take him out of here, and it will no longer show up over in his uh, piece as well. And again, as you can see here, the other thing is what we can't see right now is we can see the stars in Inception, but we can't see just natively here in the back end, what movies Joseph Gordon-Levitt is a part of. 
So let's just explore that here real quick. And this might be 202. You know, this might not be what you need right now. But given that ACF handles this a little differently, I don't want to leave you guys totally out here. I want to give you kind of a, a little bit of a high level on this. And then we can move on. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to people field group. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to say relationship here. Now, again, we already created a relationship, but we created it over the movies field group. So we're going to create this relationship here. In the people, we're going to say movies. Okay. We are creating, if I could spell, damn, we are going to create a movies relationship field within the people. So we're going to come down and we're going to say, well, what do we want to filter by? Well, we obviously want movies. All this is fine. We're going to click Save Changes. What has that done for us? Well, that has given us a movies field in here. Okay. Well, here's the interesting part, though, right? So by default, ACF doesn't behave this way. It doesn't understand that, oh, we're over Inception. We know that jo Joseph Gordon Levitt is a part of the stars of Inception. Okay. We know that. What we don't know now is if we go to Joseph Gordon Levitt, it doesn't know that he's a part of Inception. And when we get to the point of where we actually want to display some of this stuff rather than just showing it on the back end, this is kind of going to make that easier for us to handle. We won't have to do as much. So this is really important. We do not want to create a situation where we have to add Joseph Gordon-Levitt to Inception and then add Inception to Joseph Gordon-Levitt. That, that doesn't make any sense. That, that's, that's too many steps. That's too many things to manage. It's not going to work. So what we have to do is we have to create a bi-directional relationship between these two relationship fields. It's a little bit of an extra step. Uh, I'm not sure why they did it like this, but it's fine. So let's go back into our people field group. Let's come down to movies. And we're going to click on advanced. And there's this tab called bi-directional. And you should read this documentation. You should fully understand this. I'm going to try to explain it to you as best as I can. But we're in a pe we're in a people field group, which means we're over in like Joseph. We're at think of like we're adding information to Joseph Gordon-Levitt's post, like him as a person. So in our movies section, where do we want to relate that to over in the in the in the other fields? Well, we honestly want to relate it to stars at minimum. We could also relate it probably to directors, but we, we, we want to relate it over to the other side of it. So if we press save changes here, and then we come over to the movies field group, and we come back to director, and we come down to uh, advanced, and we say bi-directional, and we say movies, and then we come down to stars and we say advanced and we say movies because that's what's in those. That's what we're kind of like bi-directionally bi -directionally relating everything. And we press save changes. So in order to demonstrate this, I need to take all the stars out of inception here for a second. And then I need to refresh over here, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And you can see, take, take note of what is happening here. On Joseph Gordon-Levitt, there is nothing and I will refresh one more time. There is nothing selected for him, right? He does not technically have any movies related to him. But consider the situation where we are adding Inception into this, into this, uh, this website, right? And we come down and we're going through all the lists and everything like that. And we come down to stars and we click on Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And we have now added him to Inception. We have related him to Inception. And then we come back over to him and we click reload and now inception is now related to him bi-directionally we did not add that here it is bi-directionally related and if we make edits here if we if we remove him from inception here and we click update and then we go back to the movie inception and he is currently there and we click update he is no longer there that is what you want that is actually the way jet engine handles it uh, by default, I believe, for, for the most part, because it's kind of a different UI. But regardless, it doesn't matter what tool you're using. Understand that there's directional and bi-directional relationships. And in most, in a lot of cases, you're going to want a bi-directional because you're not going to want to have to manage things in different areas. There's definitely certain cases where you wouldn't want bi-directional. Bi but in something like this, you do not want to have to manually add Joseph Gordon-Levitt to the movies and then also add the movie to Joseph Gordon-Levitt, if that makes sense, okay? We wanna be able to display all that information, 
as dynamically as possible, as automated as possible, as efficiently as possible. That's how to handle the data. And that, my friends, is relationships. So that was a lot, even though there wasn't that many pieces that we went over there. Uh, I'm going to end this video here. Next one is coming at you right after this. Make sure you click the card. It'll be on the screen somewhere. Uh, let's keep going and learning about dynamic data.